Yo, 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 what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Siggity Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. And I'm... <laughs> so I'm showing you guys a list that um, is honestly the most unique Altergeist build I've made so far. It's super fun. It's very explosive. It's the most explosive Altergeist list I've ever played. It's extremely consistent. It's also the most consistent Altergeist Alter list that I've played. And it has so many different lines of plays. Um, it can actually play through interruptions, set up really strong boards, as, all, as well as push through pretty decent boards. It has just so much utility in the terms of defense and also just the ability to transition smoothly between defense and offense at the same time. You can kind of do both. You, you can use your sword as a shield and your shield as a sword if you get what I mean. Um, the deck is just a really, really well-rounded control deck. And I've always felt that Geist would be really good if they were able to consistently get to their engine because this deck has such an amazing engine and honestly once you get the altergeist cards online most decks just struggle to keep up because you're taking so much resources from them while you're giving yourself more and more advantage in the process it's a very unique way to play you know most decks like let's say like if you're up against a herald herald doesn't gain advantage as he takes it he trades cards with you as he negates your cards you're losing advantage as well but with this deck it'll give you resources as it takes them away from your opponent it's really strong Altergeists are infamous for being one of those decks that a lot of people dislike strongly, but I honestly like this deck. And um, before we get into the list, if you guys haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you want to support me in any way, shape, or form, I would greatly appreciate you becoming a member of my Patreon. I have um, tiers 1, 2, and 3. Each one has its own unique benefits. The first one starts at $3, the next one's $10, the other one's $15. Uh, they're all just a bang for your buck, it's worth it, and I would greatly appreciate it if you guys want to consider that, or even just join my Discord, that's free, and that's also another great way to support me, to just help the community grow as a whole, uh, yeah, so I'm going to get into the profile, then I'll show you guys my homemade combo, my spice, alright, so um, it is 60 cards, you guys know I'm infamous for this, people say 60 card decks don't work, but yet somehow I always find a way to make them work, I feel that people should just be a bit more open-minded, and be willing to try stuff before just writing it off, you know? You don't really know if something's bad if you haven't tried it. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So let's start with our starters. So this deck's pure gas. We're on three extra extraves nuts, as well as Nadir Servant. So this is uh, Dogmatica Phantom Knight Altergeist. Yep, yep, yep. You heard me say it. Dogmatica Phantom Knight Altergeist. Um... The engines uh, get smaller and smaller. The Phantom Knight's very supplemental and compact. Uh, the Dogmatica's on the heavier side because, honestly, they just give me so much offensive pressure and utility and the ability to actually kill a Dragoon after baiting a Dragoon, which is something Alter Guys have always struggled with because um, Flirtily is just such an amazing card. And it gives you more pressure for playing going second and the ability to OTK a lot more con conveniently, you know, just off of one card, which is really cool. So... Nadir is just an insane card, you guys. I also play uh, three copies of Personal Spoofing. Um, so these are all just starters that I'm going to present first. I'm just looking at how my camera view is set up. Okay, Gucci. So I'm going to slide these ones back, and then I'm going to continue. I am also playing Tour Guide. Tour Guide is an insanely powerful starter. It actually single-handedly gets your engine online. It's super powerful. If you open Tour Guide and Nadir Servant, that's one of the most cracked two-card combos you can open in this deck. It's extremely powerful. Um, we are also playing Sangan. Um, I was thinking about playing more Sangans, honestly. Just two more, just to up the consistency. Um, but between Tour Guide, Sangan, the um, Ecclesias, and the Meliseeks, and the uh, Marionetters, I felt like my list had plenty of good normal summons to pick from. And not all of them have to be normal summons. It's just... If you draw multiple, you kind of just pick which one's the best. But honestly, because my deck's so big, I needed more starters. In traditional Altergeist list, you're basically either Normal Summon Meliseek or you Normal Summon Marionetter. But even when I was playing 40 card Pure Geist, I was not opening Marionetter or Meliseek all the time, and it sucked. Um, so Ecclesia obviously helps, because it's actually just... If you draw this with your other Normal Summons, you can just special it out if you get to combo. Um, so Tour Guide, in my opinion, is actually the most powerful one. It's extremely, extremely broken in this deck. It's so good. It just literally can get you right out of the early game. Um, again, like I was saying, like, Alter guys struggle with consistency, and when their engine gets going, it's really strong, and it's really hard for every deck to keep up with, um, especially the current format. Like, when you have a consistent 
Monster Negate plus a Compulse, basically a Kirin plus a Monster Negate and multiple Spell or Trap Negates every turn. On top of everything else that your deck already does, you get those guaranteed every single turn. Plus whatever traps you have, whatever Dombaka cards, hand traps, you name it. You know, your Fog Blades, your Torrentials, you, just whatever, you know, dude, it's just crazy how powerful it is. The engine's just way too good. And even if your opponent breaks your board, you get three to four cards in your hand in the process, and you just do the same thing next turn. And it's so hard to OTK this deck. It's super annoying. It's extremely resilient. Um, it has just so much, like I said, defensive and offensive capabilities. It's just super cool. Tour Guy's just amazing. Gets you right out of the early game, which is where you need to be in Alter Guys. When your engine's up, you just play so comfortably. You're not worried about top decking a starter and praying to God that it resolves. Like, that's one of the worst feelings playing guys. Like, you're always trying to fight. It's like a fight and a constant battle. Just trying to actually summon a Hexia and get your plays going, you know. A lot of times you're just stalling, and I don't like that feeling. So, I wanted a list that could be aggressive also while still having the defensive capabilities that guys are infamous for um another great starter is multi faker incredible card um the way you play this or the way i play this i resolve faker in a less aggressive way i resolve it in more of a way to capitalize so how i use my faker is i will refrain from using it as long as i can on my opponent's turn and if i do not have to use it i will go faker for um Melisee. So I try my hardest to not use Faker and Summon Silk to get bounces, because if you Faker for Seek on end phase, you literally just make Hexia, grab yourself a Marionetter, normal Marionetter, set a Manifestation or Protocol, use Marionetter's effect, send itself, summon back your Faker, Faker's effect, summon something else from deck, you take Hexia, link it into Prime Banshee, trigger Hexia, search your other trap, whichever other trap that Marionetter did not set. So you're going to get Protocol and Manifestation no matter what. Then you take that prime banshee and that other guys you summon off faker link those into a hexia trigger prime banshee to add faker back from grave to hand so what you'll get off of resolving one multi faker literally just resolving it once you will get manifestation protocol and double hexia online with prime banshee as well so you get to pick and choose whichever ones you want to use and that is how you get out of the early game the fastest possible and that's where you get that loop of those resources and the, those interruptions i was telling you about that like decks just can't really play through without taking major negs and then they still have to break your board after that and it's too hard because you play generically good traps like tts and strikes and i main deck rivalry because it's just so good this format so there's just way too much good that comes with it um another great starter is obviously meliseek cards incredible especially going second um being able to take a card out on the way to a link Reba or a you know almirage cards amazing honestly one of the best starters in the deck um, sometimes I'll draw hands where I know like I could struggle with Ash. Like I've drawn a hand with this protocol and um, it was actually this double protocol torrential and something else. And instead of linking this off in Link Rebo and knowing that I would lose to Ash, I just normal summoned it and I set set pass, you know, flip TT and then protocol to send the other protocol to negate Ash and then this resolve. So that was like a smart play that you can do. Um, so it, it's 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 a control deck. So. There's just a level of skill that comes with it. I know some people think that control decks are just brain dead and it's just literally activating floodgates, but control decks can be just as skillful as combo decks. Combo decks have a lot less room for error depending on what build you're playing, but with control decks, you really have to make the best of what you got and stretch it. Like It's kind of like when you're on a budget and you're trying to make your stuff last until the end of the week until you get paid. That's how you play control decks. Like You have to survive, right? So like when you get resources, you have to think of the best possible way to use them i'll go through multiple scenarios in my head and i'll be like playing all of them out and be like you know what this seems like the best way to get my benefits the benefits out of the cards i'm using and still have a backup plan just in case something happens and that's how you have to think when you're playing control decks you have to think about your next turn and the turn after that what your opponent has and what you have and you're obviously playing visual simulators in your head of like does he have the hand trap does he not stuff like that really does matter um, I'm just having another peek. Um, so we are still not done with the uh, the starters. I also play three copies of Ecclesia, and um, I also play three copies of Marionetta. Marionetta is a starter in my list. If you draw it in combination with the Geist, it's a starter. If you draw it in combination with One for One or Foolish, it's a starter. These are also starters. Um, <coughs> Foolish can be a PK starter, or if you have Foolish plus Mario, it's a really great way to start your combos because you can actually just summon Mario, set a trap, foolish your multi-faker, 
and then use Marioson itself to summon Faker and then Faker for Meliseek. Link off into a Hexia, Meliseek's effect to search yourself another copy of Faker. Then you can flip that protocol. You know, you'll have a Spell Trap Negate, a Monster Negate, and a Kirin to bounce just off of um, that two card combo. So, like, when you draw good in this deck, you actually set up really, really powerful interruptions. The difficult, the obstacle that Geist always have to overcome is actually being able to play Yu Gi Oh! And I know it doesn't sound. I know it sounds like, okay, well, like, every deck struggles with that, but, like, guys struggle with that the most because they're not very consistent. In fact, I would just say that this deck isn't consistent at all, like, by themselves. So the list I have is very consistent. It is extremely consistent. All of these are starters. That's nearly half your deck. If you draw any of these, it's just such such a good position that you'll be in, um, just resolving any of them. And then it gets crazy when you draw them in combination. Like, when you draw Nadir Servant, Mario Foolish, or... You're drawing, like, Meliseek plus Ecclesia. That's another good way. <laughs> Tour Guide <laughs> plus Nadir Servant is just bonkers. I mean, dude, there's just so many cool ways to set your plays up. Um, so, those are all the starters. I'm still going to show you guys the combo. It might be a, two, a few combos. Silquitus, Conk to finish up the Geist lineup. And then I play two boots. You guys will see why these are here. They're there for a reason. Um... This is just something I really... I, I've thought about this list in my head so many times I pictured it. And I was like, dude, I just want to try it. Because I always... It's weird. Not weird, but like... With me, when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! I always have ideas. Like, it never stops. This is where all my decks come from. And a lot of times, I'll sit there and think about an idea. And I'll never make it come into fruition. Because I'll never test it. And um, I'm getting into a better habit of just testing out all my ideas. And then, I like to showcase it to you guys when it's successful. You know what I mean? I when I know it's good. We have uh, one flare. So ideally, these are just basically six cards you'd rather not draw. But it's okay if you draw them. It's just that you'd rather not. Um, some are better than others. And then for defensive cards, I play uh, three Ash. I don't really like Ash right now. It's good against some decks. Other decks, it's like not very good. Against Tri Brigade, it's decent. You actually do want to Ash Fractal to try to prevent them from getting names in their grave. Um, even if you're playing into Gamma, you... Ash is good against Shadals. It's always going to be good against Drytron. It's just that it never stops turns by itself unless they drew horribly. Um, but it is important because it's another good hand trap that I can search. I'm thinking about doing Ash, Effect Veiler, and Ghost Spell. I know it sounds weird to play one of each, but you guys, the reason why I play one of each is because I can search whichever one of them is necessary for the situation because I do play... Um, Sangan, because like when you already open Faker, you just use the tour guide combo, search Ash Blossom. If you open Marion uh, Manifestation, you can search Ash off of your um, Sangan so that you get, you know, your Faker, your pretty much your Altergeist um, combo, and then you get access to your Fog Blade and you get Ash. You get like three interruptions minimum, you know, which is really good. So I might just be a little diverse and just play one of each. Um, obviously, it decreased my chance of opening. Ash specifically, but the way I think, the way I think about like props and stats is like, I would imagine a Veiler, an Ash, and a Bell as just a three of right. It's it's a it's a lineup of hand traps. Like sure they have different names, but because every time I would draw that Veiler or that Bell, it would be drawing the second or third Ash in my mind. So technically I'm playing like three if that makes sense. It's just they have different names, so I still have a high chance of drawing a hand trap. They just wouldn't be the same names if that makes sense. Um, I also play Imperm, Imperm Faker. I actually draw that a lot. I, I, dude, my RNG with 60 card, I have like the best RNG. I don't know anybody that has better RNG with me in 60 card decks. I make 60 look like 40. Actually, it's crazy. Uh, and then Droplets is insane in this deck. It's super duper free. It's very powerful. So many cool interactions with Droplets. Uh, you chain it to so many different things. You've got Silk, you got Manny, you've got Probe, you've got Hextia, you've got your Dogmatica cards, you just the PKs, just so many free ways to use this card it's very powerful it gives you a good going second as well and obviously it's versatile it's for going first or second um and then we have three torrentials these are like the blowouts uh three rivalry you can draw these going first or second and you can still simplify the game state with these this is just so cracked right now um especially against tri brigade my locals just love tri brigade so much Honestly, and I think because it's just so simple. It's like, 
if Salman Greats was like a tier one deck, everybody would be playing Salads because people just love easy stuff. Like they don't want to play complicated decks. That's why not a lot of people play Tritrons because that deck doesn't have a lot of room for error. But with Tri Brigades, it's super easy and people just love easy stuff. So honestly, this is so good right now for my locals. Everybody loves Tri Brigades. Uh, strike, just blowouts. These cards are good going first or second. This is just like generic traps that I feel like I just don't want to play without. Then these, the rest of the traps are my engine traps. So I play Double Blade. I play Double Punishment. Uh, I'm also playing two protocols. And something different that I always do, I've always loved Manifestation. I think this card's more useful than Protocol. Obviously, Protocol is just a crazy card in general. Like, the fact that your stuff cannot be negated. Which also means, like, when Protocol is up, right? Like, if it's already active and you're playing against Strytrons, like... Your, their Herald actually cannot do anything to your Artogeist stuff, so you can freely Silquitus the uh, Herald, or you can even use Protocol's effect to negate Herald, and Herald actually could not negate it, you know? it's This is just a very strong card. Like, if I'm playing against Drytron, and I know I am, I'm activating this in draw phase, just so it could be face up, so it can no longer be negated. And it's just going to make it really hard for them to actually deal with my stuff. Uh, and then this is a Haunted Rock, an Altergeist trap that I don't have, but I'm going to get it. Um, this is integral for my combos. This is how Marionetter becomes so powerful in this deck. Um, very, very good card. That is the main deck. Extra, all Mitch matching sleeves, staying near. Hextia, best card. Uh, when you make this card, it's very uphill. Like, you are more than likely in the driver's seat once this card hits the field. It's super hard for your opponent to even catch up to you once Hextia hits the field. It is that good. Uh, Prime Banshee, uh, Double Cherubini. We have two Link Rebos, two All Mirage. I will explain a little bit more late when we get, you know, done with the extra deck. Uh, one near Gearsu. There should also be an access code here. The access code is somewhere else in another deck. So it's a 14 card extra deck. We have three Elder and one Detenic Clad. Um, just for some punishment targets that actually get value. And then this for sure, because it's like the best card to dump off a Nadir Servant. Um, now I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite combos this is actually my homemade combo here I, I this is one of the funnest things about Yu-Gi-Oh! is not just building deck but making your own combos and it actually works it makes you feel really like dang i can really do stuff you know on my own i don't need a structure deck i am the structure deck you know if that makes sense like you can literally make your own stuff and it's so fun like doing that in this game um so tour guide by yourself so you're gonna summon tour guide special out sangan uh, you're going to take the Sangan and the Tour Guide, link them off into Cherubini. This is going to accomplish multiple things. Pretty sure people watching the video were already trying to guess what it does. And if you figured it out, you know, kudos to you. Um, so we're going to search out... Off of Sangan, we're going to search our Multifaker. Then we're going to use Cherubini for cost. We are going to send Boots. What does this do, Stacks? Why are you even playing the PKs? This makes sure that you can guarantee a Faker and a Trap to go with it. So no matter what else you drew in your hand, you don't have to rely on the RNG of like, did I draw a random Trap? This guarantees a good Trap to trigger your Faker. And because Fog Blade can be activated any time, including your own monsters, that's what makes this combo so good and why I like it so much. Because A, I can protect my Cherubini with Fog Blade, and B, Cherubini could still pay costs under Fog Blade because it's just negated, but I can still pay costs. And also, C, because I can activate that trap whenever I want, I can do exactly what I mentioned to you guys in my profile when I said, I use my Faker as a way to capitalize. Instead of trying to deny a play from my opponent, I use Faker as a literally a starter. That's how it's supposed to be used. The card is more aggressive if you use it to get your guy's engine online. Because if you summon Silquitus, I guarantee you it's going to take a lot longer for you to start getting all of your Altergeist cards in rotation. One well-timed Faker gets you three interruptions and a full snowballing effect. Just a plethora of advantage that just continues to cascade out of control. And it's really just a sheer feeling of inevitability if your opponent is actually on the receiving end. It's just super hard to keep up with and super obnoxious. So... You'll banish the boots and you'll grab yourself a fog blade, and that's it's a very very simple combo. You know, it's nothing crazy. Um, I look at it; it's still it is a combo, and this is what you get off of your tour guide. And this is actually a lot, you guys, because here's what happens when this goes um, 
uninterrupted. Like, let's say you have some other cards to pair with this. Like, especially if you had a Nadir Servant, it's just amazing. Honestly, it's very, very gross. Um, but here's what happens. So, let's say your other traps were good enough to hold your opponent at bay. Uh, you will literally just say, in phase, activate Fog Blade, target Cherubini. Especially if they try to kill it, you'll just target it automatically. And then, on resolution, Faker. And then you go Faker Effect, Summon out, Meliseek. You start your turn by linking the Faker and the Meliseek into a Hextia. Make sure that Hextia zone is either here or here. Um, whatever your preference is. I like to like keep it here because you could still put other stuff here and it's not really going to like get in the way, if that makes sense. So, and it also depends where your Cherubini is, honestly, but zone placement is something that's not really necessary to worry about in this deck unless you have multiple Hextias. If you have multiple Hextias, you're going to want one in the extra monster zone and another one separate from it. Do not put your Hextia under your other Hextia. Leave your Hexia separate, use your Faker, summon Faker to one zone, and then summon the monster off Faker to the other zone. That is a lot better. Do not put Hexias under Hexias. Keep it this way. It's a lot better. Because now you can Manifestation and then summon more to the Hexia zones and continue to use both those Hexias. It's going to give you a lot more pressure so that you do not sacrifice a Hexia to resolve another Hexia. And then you are forced to have to use a Manifestation to get another Negate. Um, so that's the only time zone placement really matters in this deck. But anyways, you make your Hexia, trigger Meliseek to search yourself a copy of Maria. Then you're going to summon Marionetter, use this effect. You're going to set either one of these traps. You're getting both of them this turn, so let's say you set Manifestation, right? Then you're going to use Marionetter's effect on itself, and you're going to summon back Faker. Faker's effect is going to summon another Altergeist from the deck. I normally go for another Meliseek. And then you're going to take these two. Link them into a Prime Banshee, trigger Hexia's effect, add protocol, take the other guys in the Prime Banshee, link those into another Hexia, trigger Prime Banshee to add the Faker from your grave to your hand, and off of one Tour Guide, this is actually what you really get. You really get all of this off Tour Guide, and especially when you Fog Blade, your own Cherubini to protect it. At the end of this combo, you can pay cost with Cherubini. This is why I do like playing multiple blades and multiple boots. Because this stuff will come up and you just want the full value out of your cards. You'll just dump and grab yourself another copy of Fog Blade. Just super duper nice. Very, very, very nice. And you'll you can get like a plus four. And all of these resources come from a tour guide resolving. That's very, very powerful. Um, if you pair with Nadir, it just gets better and better from there, you know. Let me check how much time. Okay, so I can show you guys some more cool stuff. So now we're talking about Maria. Um, so we can go Marionetter plus one for one in a discard, foolish, and like an actual... Ultra guys. So the best Marionetter combo is with Faker, without a doubt. But Marionetter plus any Ultra Geist monster is a combo that minimum can make Hexia and a little bit more depending on which guys you open because of Haunted Rock. This is nothing new. I did not come up with this and I'm not taking credit for it. Um, it's just a standard Ultra Geist combo that either people play or they just don't like playing Haunted Rock so they never get to capitalize from this interaction. I think Haunted Rock is a one of that's worth playing because you want to get out the early game as much as possible playing Ultra Guys. It's just a must-have. When you are out the early game, there's very few decks that can actually keep up with you. And I'm not even kidding. Like, I've played against Geist when they've literally opened up the nuts and they have everything. And it's just like, it almost feels like you're just wasting time and just go to game two. Because even when you do finally get on the, um, I guess you could say, when you get ahead or you get more advantage than them, it takes so much work and so much time that... Like, you're doing yourself a disservice by even fighting that battle because their odds are already stacked against you. And if you finally do, you're not going to OTK them. They're going to survive. You finally break their board, and now you're in a grind game with Altergeist. And all their cards replace themselves. Like, Silk replaces itself. Seek replaces itself. Marionetta replaces itself. Hextia and Prime Banshee replace themselves. Faker technically replaces itself. It's just like, why even bother? Manifestation can replace itself. Like, it's just ridiculous. So... Um, if you have Marionetter plus, like, let's say, one for one, right? You could discard any monster. 
and you one for one out a milliseek, you'll link the milliseek. These are like some cool combos to know, you know. It's nice just for Alter Guys to be able to pop off. Um, this will search out a multi faker for you. And then you're going to summon the Marionetter. And unfortunately, because this is not a Geist, um, you can't do the Haunter Rock combo and bring back Faker, but you can still get a really decent setup. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to use Marionetter to set, I would set Protocol in this situation. Normally, set Protocol, send it off for cost, or not for cost, just send it, and then summon the Seek. It's going to be really good because you have Link Kribo, and if it tributes itself, you could do that cool play. Um, but off of that, you'll get yourself a Faker and another plus off Seek. So when you flip the protocol and use it to negate, res, you get Faker 1, Seek 2, you know, depending on how you want to structure your plays, whichever one's priority. Um, and then the Seek can just search you a, um, I would go for Conquery just for more protection. And Faker would give you, that's where it's okay to actually use Faker more aggressively. Um, as opposed to capitalize because you know you're going to have multiple geists on field so you'll get some really cool interruptions you can just bounce you know some of this guy protect you link Kree will protect you you know just your engines online and that's the most important thing with geists um marionette plus foolish is the equivalent of marionette plus multi faker just with less extra steps so like if you open foolish and you foolish out your faker you summon Marionetter, you set protocol or manifestation, uh, you use Marionetter's effect, you summon the Faker, bring out the Seek, turn these into a Hexia, thank you Lord Jesus, Hexia's effect will then search you out a copy of Faker, and then you have Monster Negate, Spell Trap Negate, plus uh, a Kirin, which comes off of Faker, so you get three interruptions off two cards. Very, very nice. You get the, a similar board off of um, actually opening Faker and Marionette, which is more realistic because, you know, Foolish is a one-up, but it's a starter nonetheless. Um, you can just go Marionette to set Haunted Rock, activate it, discard the multi-Faker, use Marionette to actually send this for cost, summon back Faker, and you'll use the Faker. And you can summon out Silk if you want to get the trap back so that you can have a trap to activate. Or if you already have what you need, you just summon out Seek. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take these two and link them into a Hextia. And then you're going to use the Seek to search a Faker, take the Hextia and the Marionetter. And go into another copy of Hextia. Hextia is just that gross of a card. Hexia's effect, I would still go for the protocol. Or if you're playing against another control deck, you might actually benefit more from getting multiple Hexias. So Manifestation is going to get you more advantage in general and a bigger board. It just doesn't give you a monster negate. But let's say you open Strikes or Imperms. You've already got that, right? So you don't need it. Um, in theory, it depends what deck you're playing. If you're playing combo, you want as many monster negates as you could possibly have. You can never have too many against those decks. And You'll just have the manifestation for Hexia, trigger your Faker, make sure that you summon, you know, one each, keep the Hexia separate from each other. That's really important. And it's just a really nice setup. It's very strong. Um, you have so many different ways to do the same thing. The Dogmatica cards just give you an extra oomph. Any Altergeist combo plus some Dogmatica cards is always going to be pretty good. Even like something as simple as just Meliseek, right? Let's say you have Meliseek plus a, um, or even better than Meliseek. Sometimes one for one is, I mean, all the time one for one is better than Meliseek, unless you have no discard fodder, right? So, like, if you have Nadir Servant, which is just a better copy of Equasia plus Meliseek, that's really strong because you'll get your Geist and your Dogmatica engine on. Like, you just link Karibo, get yourself a Faker. You know, Nadir, Dump to Tentaclad, at Ecclesia, you'll get a pretty strong setup just off of those two cards, and it's just really, really good. It's it's a surplus, which you like. Um, if you have one for one and just like a random discard, like one for one plus Faker is another cool combo, but even if it's just one for one it's by itself, you can go one for one for Seek, turn Seek into Lee Karibo, 
use Seek's effect to search Maria, summon Maria, set whatever the heck you want. It could just be manifestation. Just for example, it's whatever you feel like you need. Uh, Maria's effect on itself, you know, summon back to Seek. Uh, depending on what you have, I would go for protocol if I was working bare bones off of that alone. Um, and it's just really, really good because when you when you go for protocol, what you can do um, is when you use protocol's effect, like when you activate it using effect on activation and negate, sending C for cost, you could search Faker and activate Faker on resolution, which is super duper cool. Um, honestly, just amazing, you guys. Very, very amazing interactions. Um, if you have one for one discarding Faker, it's also very, very gross. Um, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing combo, honestly. Um, the issue becomes like, you have to summon a non um, Altergeist, but getting Faker in Grave, when you can use Marinetta to set Manifestation, means you can still play. So like, if you have one for one Faker, you'll just summon out Seek, get Link Revo, get Maria, summon Maria, and then at that point you would set Manifestation. And you would still use Maria to summon back Seek, so you can continue generating advantage. And you can just flip the Maria, I mean the Mano, and target the um, the multi faker. And you can still play. You can still pop off that way. It's just so many cool ways to do the same thing with this deck. Um, it's amazing, you guys. It's a very very cool deck. It's very well rounded. I honestly like this deck a lot. I've been a huge fan of Geist and Paleos. I've always thought they were like literally. I think that they are the best trap decks. Um, keep in mind the tips I was saying, like, if you open any combo, especially like a tour guide combo, and you already have Faker access, whether you drew Manifestation or the Faker itself, you could search the Ash. Like, let's say you drew Manifestation with the tour guide combo. Um, you would literally do the same thing I showed you guys, where you go tour guide for Sangan, make the Cherubini. Tour guide searches Ash. I mean, Sangan searches Ash. Then you use Cherubini to dump Faker for cost, because Faker is a level 3, that's a really cool interaction. Then you just use the Manifestation to bring back the Faker that you dumped off Cherubini. So you can not draw Altergeist cards and still get Altergeist cards. That's what I love about my list, that's what I mean by like, this is my most consistent and powerful list that I've ever made. And It's more than 40 cards, that's what makes it more me, you know, it's 60 cards, so you're always going to know that's like my, my touch. Like, that's going to be it in the video, you guys. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. Make good choices. Don't your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. And y'all have a wonderful night. Peace.